So let us simulate the DC to DC chuck converter and see how the discussion in the last lecture goes on with the simulation as well. So this is actually a chuck converter. Here I have used several props to utilize various important waveforms of this converter. This is a voltage source which is a 12 volt and I intend to uh, develop it such that I get minus 18 volt at the output. So this inductor, this is L1. This is the inductor which is L2. The L1 ensures we have a continuous connection of the input current and L2 ensures that we have a continuous current flowing at the output circuit. This is the series capacitor C1 and here we have the output capacitor C2 while this is our load resistance. The switching frequency is set at 50 kilohertz. You can either write 50,000 like this one or you can simply write this as this 50k and for an output of minus 18 volt through a 12 volt source using a 12 volt source this duty cycle D should be set at a value equal to 0 0.6. I have used this current probe which is measuring the input current I in. This is measuring the output current I naught. This voltage probe is measuring the output voltage with respect to this ground uh, point. And therefore, I have designated this as V0. Also, I am measuring the current which is flowing through this diode and the current which is flowing through this switch, which I have shown as IQ. So, Q stands for a control switch and the amount of current flowing through uh, this switch is designated as IQ. This is ID. So, let us simulate this uh, particular circuit. So, after that, I have simulated this uh, circuit here. We have all the variables available here. So, let us first of all find out the V naught here and plot it with the Vs. So, as soon as I plot them in here, let me first of all bold these lines a little bit. So, make these line thickness equal to 4. Uh, you can see here that, that this whole red line actually passes through a transient phase after which it settles down at a value which is equal to which is equal to 18. So, you can see this is 17.9 uh, e to the power plus 1 which is equal to minus 18 volt. So, we have a polarity inversion and we have received the same amount of output voltage as uh, we obtained it through the uh, voltage gain expression. Also, you can notice here that this Vs is a positive 12 value. So, these two things are now confirmed that this uh, uh, particular converter provide us a voltage inversion at the output. Next, what we can see here is the is the input current, which is this I in. So, this I in, as you can see here, this is a continuous current. It is not coming to a ground value, which is equal to zero value. So, it is we do not have a discontinuous input current. If I plot the I naught on this uh, in this waveform as well. Then you can see that this I naught is in the negative domain. It is because the current which is flowing in the inductor is actually coming from uh, from this particular side. However, the ammeter that I have connected in to measure the uh, inductor current I2 or I naught, it is measured with respect to this side positive. So that's why we have a inversion here. Regardless of this particular thing, you can see clearly. You can see here that this current is is having a continuous connection and so is this current I in which is also having a continuous connection way above the ground point or the zero point. So, these two things are now confirmed that we have a continuous input current and a continuous output current. The next thing we can see here is the is the amount of current which flows through the switches I Q and the switch I D. So, let us let us draw that the, these two together. So, now you can see here that the let me bold it a little bit. So, now you can see here that we have this red line is representing the amount of current flowing through the diode and this blue line indicates the amount of current which is flowing through the uh, the, the control switch Q. And notice here one thing that both of them have uh, are actually receiving the slope of the inductor current IL1 and IL2. And if you notice one more thing, 
that ID has the same wave shape as that of this current IC uh, with the fact that this IC has a negative portion as well which is well recept, uh, received by the switch IK2 during the time when we have this diode not functioning. Uh, I hope that you have uh, you have understood this uh, very uh, the concept of this very converter very well and that you can now simulate it at home for a more visual and a more better understanding of this particular converter. Thank you very much.